Hello dear students, let's learn one more example of recursive function. In this example, we will learn how to build a recursive function to find binary equivalent of decimal number. So the function should take a decimal number as a parameter. And function should find what is the binary equivalent of the decimal number. As an example, here the function written is dec to bin, decimal to binary. And n is the parameter. Now the n that we are going to pass is a decimal number. For instance, suppose we pass this n as n, which is a decimal number. Then the output generated by this recursive function, just check this is a recursive function because there is a recursive call over here. Deck to bin calls itself, isn't it? Then the output printed by this function should be 1010. As you all know, that binary equivalent of 10 is 1010. Now, although I am sure that you know. How do you convert a decimal number to binary? But just bear with me. I'm going to make a small explanation of how to convert a decimal to binary. The explanation to convert decimal to binary has been done here so that we know how the program works or the recursive function works. Okay, let's take a decimal number such as. 11. Now I'll write this as 11 base 10 because decimal numbers have radix 10 and we want to know what is binary equivalent. So the binary number will be having base 2 because in binary there are only two digits 0 and 1 as you all know. Procedure of converting 11 to a binary number is we will divide this 11 the decimal number with 2. We will divide 11 with 2 not with 3 or 4 or any other number because base 10 has to be converted into base 2. And what we do is, now here we go, if we go with the description of the program, this is the number n, n is 11 and we want to convert this into binary. So we divide n with 2. Please try to understand, we divide n with 2, n is the given number. So if we keep consistent with what we have here in the function, you can see n is the number, isn't it? Just check, n is the number, that is 11. And what we are doing is, we are dividing n with 2, check this, n by 2. But when we divide n with 2, we are going to get a quotient and a remainder, isn't it? So we'll say 2 into 5 is 10, but the remainder is 1. So we keep aside the remainder. Now this remainder, we are calling it as R in our code. After dividing n with 2, we'll get some quotient, correct? 5, 2 5s are 10 and remainder is 1. So going back to our function, you can check that this line, this line records the remainder. Remainder is n percent 2. Okay. Now, once we have got this quotient, we will call this as n now. So n is no more of 11. n was 11, but the quotient that we have got, correct? We are calling it as n and we again divide this new value of n with 2. So 2, 2 into 2 is 4 and remainder is 1. Now check the new remainder that we have got is 1. And we have got a quotient 2. Now we call this quotient as n and we further divide this new quotient with 2. We have 2 into 1 is 2 and the remainder is 0. So we got the new remainder. Okay. And the new quotient is called n again. So n was 11, then it changed to 5, then it changed to 2, now it is 1. Now we further try to divide this new value of n with 2. But you know division is not possible. The only thing you can do is you can say 2 into 0 is 0 and the remainder is 1. So this is the new remainder. 
correct two zeros are zero remainder is this one same same remainder we get as the quotient and now if you call this new quotient as n then you observe that n has dropped down from 11 to 0 n has now become 0 and if n becomes 0 we will stop i mean we will stop this process of division obviously now there is no sense in dividing this number 0 with 2 you are going to get always 0 as the answer by the way the list of remainders that we have got are printed or are displayed from bottom to top that means the output that will be produced is this last remainder will be printed first then this zero which was the second last remainder will be printed second and so on so 1011 is the binary number which is equivalent to 11 which is given in decimal you can just put this procedure you know in your own words like this that repeat the process of dividing n with 2 continuously and whatever is the quotient you call it as n again but you record the remainders that you get in the way and once this n becomes 0 look how it converges to 0 we will print all remainders from bottom up okay so this is the procedure fine now coming back to this recursive function how it works imagine that we have passed 11 okay then this recursive function will start and execute all these lines now one thing you observe that the recursive function deck to bin is defined as void here so deck to bin is not going to return any value back to main why am i telling you this is because all the previous recursive functions that we designed were returning some value this is the first time when we are designing a recursive function which does not return a value so you will see in this recursive code return statement is missing obviously it should be it should be missing and one more thing you observe is that this recursive function has if statement of course in the earlier videos i told that recursive function will definitely have if because it has to check the base case but in all the previous recursive functions we had else associated with if but in this example we have written if but else is not there as you all know else is optional every if need not have else now the best way according to me to learn this recursive function is to write it on paper and run it for n equal to 11 it may be it may be boring initially to do all this hard work but it pays really so what i will do is i will do the hard work of writing deck to bin i'll write db in short and you know that it has a parameter int n okay now there is a variable r declared now check that this is a local variable of deck to bin and then there is a if statement if n is greater than 0 then evaluate r r is evaluated as remainder after dividing n with 2 and then there is printf just check there is printf percent dr but just observe very carefully we calculate the remainder and we print it but before we print we make a recursive call to the same function deck to bin with the parameter n by 2 this is the trick here ends the if statement and here ends the function now let's run this function with n as 11 how it runs when n is 11 this local variable r this local variable r will be declared and the program or the function will check is 11 greater than 0 yes so all the three lines written in the if will run how about this line how will this run how will this line run r is 11 percent 2 correct so r will be 1 check that the local variable of this function which is running has evaluated r as 1 but then after this line there is a recursive call just check db is calling itself 
So, so in our sense, we can say that this DB has been called recursively again and it has parameter in 10. Correct? But what is this n passed now? Previously n was 11, but now notice db is calling itself with the parameter n by 2. n by 2 here means 11 by 2 and 11 by 2 is 5, not 5.5. Remember, we are talking about integer division. So now the parameter n is 5. I hope you are going consistent with our explanation when n was 11 first time. Now n is 5. Observe this. So, what do you do in this function? This function as usual runs by declaring its own local variable r. So, again the variable r is declared but local for this function which is currently running. It will then check is the current value of n which is 5. Is it greater than 0? Yes, it is true. So, all the lines written in the if should run and the first line is compute r is equal to n percent 2. Now observe here r will be 5 percent 2, 5 percent 2 is 1. And then there is a statement deck to bin. Call deck to bin again with n by 2, isn't it? So the current function calls itself with parameter 5 by 2. I hope you are understanding. So, if this function has to run again, we have void deck to bin int n. But this time n is 5 by 2, which is 2. Again, check n was 5, but now n has become 2. Okay. Now, this function will then declare its own local variable r and then it will check is n greater than 0 that is is 2 greater than 0 which is true so it will compute r as n percent 2 in this sense r will be 0 2 percent 2 is 0 and then there is a recursive call db n by 2 yes so all these lines should run written in the if but there is a recursive call here so from this point the function is called itself again. So, what's the new function which is now running? Let's check. We have again y db deck to bin. Okay, in 10. And what is the parameter passed? Just check here. What is the parameter passed here? 2 by 2 because n is 2 now. 2 by 2 is 1. So, n is 1 here. Now, if you literally run this function, again r is declared then the function will check is n which is 1 greater than 0 which is true isn't it so all the lines written in the if must run and the first line is r is computed as n percent 2 n percent 2 means 1 percent 2 and this makes r as 1 but then there is a recursive call deck to bin n by 2 so db deck to bin is called with 1 by 2 as the parameter and now the new function deck to bin starts all over with parameter int as n. But what is this n now? Remember this call is deck to bin 1 by 2, 1 by 2 is 0, not 0 0.5. Remember we are talking about integer division. So n over here is 0. Okay, enough is enough. You see we have reached this n has become 0, so time to break the recursion, isn't it? Let's see what this db does. It declares r, it starts declaring r and then it says, let me check is n is greater than 0, but 0 greater than 0 is false. What that means is none of the lines written in the if should run. So these lines don't run and the next line runs, but the next line is end of function. So ultimately what happens when db is called with n as 0, nothing happens but the function ends because the if is false and ultimately the control will jump out of if and the next line is of course end of the function. Yes, so I, I repeat when deck to bin is called with the parameter n as 0, it simply ends. Now if this deck to bin ends, this, this has finished now, this has finished. 
obviously you know from the fundamentals of function that if a function ends the control will go back to the calling function and the calling function was this which i am ticking but where will the control come back yes it will come back at the next line here after the recursive call because come on the function will resume its work it says that okay now i am resuming from the next line from where i left out last time and what is this next line in the if remember this is printf percent d r we are printing the remainder hello which remainder is getting printed first which remainder is getting printed first the last one generated you observe actually the first remainder generated in in this entire series was this one then one then zero and then one and what we are doing is we are printing the last remainder first so the output till now will be one agreed everyone and now this print also has finished and this function says okay i resumed i resumed with print and now this is the end of my if statement and now nothing is pending in my code because i have reached the end of the function so even i am ending so when this function will finish what happens is the control will go back to the calling function isn't it and this which i am ticking is the calling function and obviously it will resume from the next line from where it left out which is printf percent dr just check which remainder are we printing second the second last remainder we are printing second so the output till now will be 1 followed by 0 1 followed by 0 and now the function which i just now resumed says that i have finished with the if all the statements in the if and that's it my code is over and i am now ending obviously the calling function resumes and now there is no more explanation needed i suppose calling function will resume from the next line after recursive call which has printf percent d r so we are printing this r which is 1 so the output till now is 1 0 and now after this print the if statement is over so the function ends if this function also ends which i am striking out here the calling function resumes with print and it prints its r which it had preserved as its local variable so one is the output now printed okay one and now after printing the remainder this function says i have finished with the if and i have finished with the function so even this function db will end and obviously main will resume because main had called this deck to bin passing the parameter n well i know that the screen has become too messy too shabby but this is the best way when you are initially learning about recursion to have patience and write each and every statement of the function and see how the chain breaks of the recursive calls and how the previous functions resume doing their work i hope you have understood this entire code written over here because this is what we have executed numerous times there is nothing extraordinary in main obviously main has a number a and we ask the user to input some decimal number a for instance if user enters 11 then we are calling deck to bin 11 and this deck to bin 11 is going to print 1101 on the screen that's it this is how you convert a decimal number to binary number thank you very much